Welcome to the Cyber Chronicles. My name is Brian Stevenson. We scrub the internet so you don't have to. We look at the most interesting articles shared across the internet and then talk about them every week. This episode is going to be like everyone we've had. Really some interesting news. We've got a hacker exploit, zero day exploit that was shared on Twitter. We have a small hack that affects 9 million did I say million? Nine million people. We're going to talk about how FireEye found that Russian Research Lab is using development and malware. We're going to talk about some stuff about Cybersecurity Awareness Month that can help out anybody. And we're going to talk about a very interesting article, again, on Wired Magazine and how they bought an, a voting machine on eBay with the upcoming elections. You're definitely going to want to stay tuned and listen to that. So let's get started. Okay, the fifth most popular article shared across the internet last week was for our friends from the Hacker News. A hacker discloses a new zero-day exploit on Twitter. Uh, goes by the name Sandbox Scraper. He put it up on GitHub. It's a uh, flaw that allows low-privilege attackers to elevate their privileges on a tar- in our target system, and then the exploit actually can delete critical system files. Uh, there's a proof of concept out on GitHub, but even uh, he recommends don't uh, don't test this because uh, it could crash your operating system. He wanted to share it with Microsoft so they could patch that exploit. That was the fifth most popular article. Okay, the fourth most popular article shared across the internet last week was from CNN. It's I'm going to call it the breach of the week. We've got a small little uh, compromise here of over nine million passengers' information from Cathayway. Pacific got hacked. This is an airline in uh, in Hong Kong in Asia, and uh, it's one of the largest air, airlines in, in the world. Their stock took a 5% hit as a result of this. It looks like earlier this year, uh, they had, may have had a data breach that compromised all of their customer information, including names, date of birth, phone numbers, email addresses, and passport numbers. Um, and in the article also states, latest embarrassing breach made hit, hit by major airlines. British Airlines said last month they got hacked. Of course, they don't talk about, what did we, what did we talk about last week? Uh, Google Plus, we talked about uh, Medicare, Medicaid, 75,000 uh, patient records. Uh, this just seems to happen so frequently now, it just gets buried in the news. You don't see this in the paper anywhere, but you will hear it from the Cyber Chronicle. Let's move on to our third most popular article of the week. Okay, our third most popular article of the week comes to us from the FireEye Research Group, Tip of the Hat. Um, This comes to Hacker News, writes about it, but FireEye seems to have one of the best research uh, threat intelligence teams out in the marketplace. They showed it evidence that proves the involvement of Russian-owned research institute in the development of the Triton malware. If you're not familiar with that, that caused industrial system controls to shut down unexpectedly, including a petrol plant in Saudi Arabia last year. Um, it targets controllers made by Snyder Electric, which are used in oil and gas facilities. So it's a very scary malware uh, used for autonomous control to independently monitor critical systems and then immediately takes action. Um, so read the article, Hacker News, FireEye, continue to do your great research in, in, um, in having the guts to go out and name people who are actually developing these things, including nation states. So we're going to move on to our second most popular article of the week. Okay, the second most popular article of the week, we're in Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Yay, that's going to help us so much. But uh, this is an article that came out, a lot of people shared it from thequint.com, and this article talks about the four common cybersecurity mistakes that you should avoid. We'll go through them quickly here. They're pretty obvious ones, but just to make sure, keep our users safe. Keep weak passwords or not changing passwords often enough. We see that a lot. Um, People using the same passwords And since we've had, let's see, Google+, LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it, they've been breached. Uh, A lot of people use the same passwords for those and other systems. Change your passwords. Change them often. Uh, Replying to unsolicited emails. So if you get an email from somebody that you don't know who they are, don't open the email um, and obviously don't provide any information. Uh, Downloading unverified attachment or apps. If you come across unsolicited mail, you don't know who that person is, especially if it's a PDF, um, or a uh, you know any sort of document that can execute malware pictures are another one um, just don't don't open it don't download it if you don't know who it's from 
And then the fourth thing they said is using an unknown internet connection or Wi-Fi while traveling. This is something that a lot of people are not aware of. There's, there's a product you can buy out there, one called Pineapple, which basically allows you as a hacker to set up your own free Wi-Fi or name it whatever you want. And you'll see these in airports all over the place. It'll say free Wi-Fi and the airport name, and it's actually not the airport, it's a hacker who wants to capture all your information. They put those in big places, big uh, hotels and conferences, uh, everything else. So just if it, if it doesn't require a password, almost every Wi-Fi is gonna say, we need some sort of information before we can allow you to continue. Don't uh, connect to those, those, those free Wi-Fis. That was the fourth most uh, common mistakes that people use according to that article. Good article, pick it up, read it. Uh, we'll have the link below. Okay, a quick shout out to our sponsors, Focus Point Technologies based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast as well as Fortinet and FireEye. We'd like to we thank your contributions as well. So please click on their links below and let's go to our number one story right after this quick break. Uh, but you're going to want to see, hear about this information about eBay. It's a crazy story. Hang on. Focus Point Technologies is a woman-owned cybersecurity solutions provider. We are headquartered in Minnesota, and we have a unique approach. Our Security Technology Optimization Program, or STOP as we like to call it, takes a look at unused and overlapping functionality in the tool sets that you already own with the goal of lessening the number of vendors in your environment and saving your organization money. Give us a call at 651-330-5521. Okay, the number one article comes to us from Wired Magazine, and they actually, um, I'm just going to make a plug for them, even though we have no compensation or tie to them whatsoever. They're running for $5. So you can get a digital edition to their magazine for the year. Um, they continually have in the top 10 articles every week on cybersecurity. Journalism is really tough these days, and it's tough uh, uh, to find people that are that are really doing adding content in cybersecurity. Wired Magazine is doing that, so I'd like to tell everyone to reach out, take advantage of that five dollar uh, subscription. I, I know I did, but uh, the article this week they talk about is about voting machines, and this particular author, Mike Brown. He bought a two voting machines on eBay for less than a hundred dollars each, and he thought, well, surely, you know, these these things, these voting machines are going to have, uh, you know, very tough to get into and break into. But it was uh, it, it, crazy in the article he writes here. The tamper-proof screws didn't work. Uh, the computer com equipment was still in intact, and it, most surprisingly, the hard drives had not been wiped. The information he found on the, on the hard drives included candidates, precincts, number of votes cast on the machine, all not encrypted. Uh, property of the government labels were still intact, which means somebody sold government property with voter information, location data online at a low cost with no consequence. So it's uh, equivalent of buying a surplus police car with all the logos still attached because it looks like a, a, a voting machine today. So pick up Wired Magazine, read the article. He reversed engineered the machine to understand how they could be manipulated. He goes into quite depth on how easy it was for him to do as a cybersecurity expert. So that's it for this week in the Cyber Chronicles. We hope you have a fantastic week. And please subscribe down below and watch us next week.